Go, you'll be late. Wine whined in Jungkook's arms, who kept papering kisses on her neck to her jaw. She closed her eyes when he bit on that specific spot. Mm, she whined in protest, which died on her tongue when he kissed her. He's a dominant. He loves to dominate me. He loves to mock me and make sure to let me know he's marking me as his territory. He's hard on the edges, but soft on the insides. I get to get close to his monster. His monster is farewell for me. He doesn't hold back. He would take me any way possible. My throat is sore because I communicated with his monster last night and he my throat so roughly until tears and saliva were making an absolute mess. And then he me. The slight ache in between my legs is a reminder of an incredible night, though all the nights are simply mind-blowing since I submitted myself to him. My monster goes feral for him as well. His monster loves to dominate me and mine, loves to be dominated by him. His eyes are so intimidating that I want to be drawn in the darkness. Lost, never find a way out or just never look in, in his eyes when he stares down in my soul. He takes his claim, he takes my soul and polishes it and then puts it back in me again. He contains so much darkness in him that it seeps out of him. It consumes me and I love that it does. I love that he shares him with me. When I tell him I can't anymore, he pushes my limits to the farthest. He pushes my boundaries and revels in it. I never thought I would be at it, but he made me one. He made me crave him. I crave him, his intoxicating incense that wants me to choke on it, his intimidating gaze. When he looks at me up and down, like a hunter looks at his prey, I love the roughness of his hands when he caresses his rough palms up and down on my arms. I crave it when he bites my elbow and whispers dirty, dirty things he wants to do to me. I crave his approval, I crave his admiration, and the most important I crave the most pure thing that I could feel is his love. He hasn't confessed yet, but it seeps out of him like honey and dribbles all over my body and soul. He has healed the scars of the past. He had healed me. He shared his work with me. How he keeps women and children safe. Human trafficking is a great role in this society, and he's making efforts to keep humans safe. Also, the whole organization is run by a man who is sadly one of us. He sells humans to make money. Jacob wants his claw on his neck. He never told me about his parents. Whenever I ask him, he changes the subject. He's so dark. But the care he gives me is worth dying for. He and other opas taught me how to control my monster. She at first doesn't listen to me, but then I let her in free reign. And she submitted to me, feeling, is, feeling her is extraordinary. She communicates with me. She's just as nasty as his monster. The thing she tells me to do to him, God, absolute filth. And now this man won't leave my lips until I'm totally out of breath. He drains me with just a freaking kiss. Finally, he pulls away, I breathe it heavily. The only sound audible to me was me heaving with my forehead on his shoulder. And then my heaving melted with a deep, velvety chuckle. Here, right here, I melt and submit. This man has his way, but 
I have him in my palms. You, breathing heavily, deviant, go. With a lost pack, he went. I sighed and sat on the disheld bed. I caressed the wrinkled sheet. A hue of tint appeared from the flashback of the last night. My hand holds that huge blue diamond. He proposed to me yesterday. And of course I said yes. And how come I not? Ever since he came in my life. My, my life is simply a dream come true. He doesn't say it, but I know he loves me. Shigopa is so protective of me, tells me about her mom. All the other opals are all so lovely. They all teach me tricks to control my monster. Everything feels like a dream, but I know it's true. But even if it's a dream, I don't want to wake up. Because I began to love him where there's no point of return. Leah, is it ready? Wine asked, reaching the kitchen. She prepared food for him, but asked Leah to prepare his favorite sweet. Leah nodded and gave her the box, while he smiled widely and thanked her for her help. She went to his office, the elevator door opened, and what she witnessed next made her still in her place. The woman she admired when she first came was on his lap. Ella stood up. I'm, I'm sorry, I tripped. She bowed and left the room, with wine staring at him and shock written on her face. Come here, Zora, he spoke, moving his chair to her direction. She obliged and came in front of him. He put the box on the table and pulled her in his lap. She straddled him. What's with their face? he asked, caressing her cheek with the back of his fingers. She tripped and it and if you want, then I will fire her. He spoke and Vine looked at him. She was in your lap. Vine spoke so quietly, but he heard it. I promise she cut him off by putting her finger on his lips. To say that you love me, she told him and he stared at her. Suddenly the darkness seeping from him became aggressive. He stayed quiet. Wine waited, her heart in her throat, her heart beating faster than a cheetah. Chunk. She couldn't complete that that he stood with his hand around her throat. He slammed her on the nearby wall. Pain seeped in her body, the tightness around her throat what was cutting her ear off. I do not love you. He spoke the words with so much venom that she could feel them going down her veins like a poison. Her eyes watered and just when darkness tried to take her over, he released her. She slid down the wall and coughed, holding her burning throat, which must have have the mark of his fingerprints. Tears ran down her face, not from the physical pain, but from his words. Then what is all this? she asked when she stood to her full height. Obsession, desire, mine. You are mine, he told her with a hand over her cheek. Mine checked his hand away. I'm nobody's, she whispered. You belong to me, he spoke while grinding his teeth. No, I don't. I don't belong to you, she told him as tears ran down her cheek. She pushed him enough to get out of his hold. She pushed the elevator button and the door didn't open. Don't. A growl penetrated the air and the hair on her neck froze. She stepped in the elevator, faced him. Her eyes held the tear of his betrayal and she took off the ring from her finger. She threw it on his feet. Not yours anymore, she spoke and the elevator door closed. To be continued.